This video was made possible thanks to the support of our amazing patrons. We couldn't do this without you. Don't forget that you can support the channel for free and receive 10% off orders over $10 of Flipside Gaming by using the promo code AFFINITY at the checkout. Or if TCG Player and Magic Madhouse are more your thing, then be sure to place your order through our affiliate links in the description. Once again, at no extra cost to yourselves. Hello everybody and welcome back to another EDH gameplay video brought to you by Affinity 4 Commander. My name is Martin. And my name is Alex. Today we welcome back Daniel, who you may recognise as one of the slow-mo guys. We are also joined by Sam, a good friend of ours and an MTG judge who you may remember from earlier episodes. As always, I will leave links to our guest social media accounts in the video description, so feel free to check them out. But before we begin, we have an announcement, a free to enter competition, the winner of which will receive an official Affinity for Commander playmat shipped anywhere in the world free of charge. We will also be giving three lucky runners up a complete set of our official tokens as well, so there is everything to play for. To enter this competition, you need to do two things. One, be subscribed to the channel, and two, tell us in the comments below what your dream Magic the Gathering crossover would be. We've already had Godzilla, Transformers, My Little Pony, so at this point, anything's possible, really. We'll be announcing the winners on Wednesday the 9th of September, so be sure to have your entries submitted by then. Good luck to everyone who enters, but for now, let's get back to the game at hand. Let's take a look at those opening hands. I'm playing my Kenrith the Returned King Mutate deck. Why did I pick Kenrith you ask? Because he is the king of the monsters of course. I'll, I'll let myself out. I keep an opening hand containing Birds of Paradise, Baby Godzilla Ruin Reborn, Parcel Beast, Bio Quartz Space Godzilla, Command Tower, A Plains and an Island. I am playing my Siona, Captain of the Pileus Aura and Token deck. My opening hand consists of Open the Armoury, Plea for Guidance, Sun Titan, Desert of the True, Myriad Landscape, A Plains, and A Forest. Sam is playing his Otrimi the Ever Playful Mutate deck. He keeps an opening hand of Findhorn Elves, Paradise Druid, Sea Dasher Octopus, Migratory Great Horn, Woodland Cemetery, Temple of Mystery, and A Forest. And finally, Daniel is playing his Kalatas Traitor of Get value deck. His starting hand is comprised of Malakia Blood Witch, Exquisite Blood, Mephidros Vampire, Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth, and Three Swamps. Daniel wins the die roll and starts the game off by playing a super shiny Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth. With nothing more to do, he passes to me. Alex plays Command Tower and casts Birds of Paradise. He then passes the turn. Sam plays a forest and casts Findhorn Elves before ending his turn. I play Myriad Landscape and pass to Daniel. Daniel plays a swamp and casts Gate to Phyraxia. He then passes the turn. Alex plays an island and then casts Cultivate. He searches his library for a mountain and a plains, putting the former into play tapped and the latter into his hand. Out of mana, Alex ends his turn. Sam plays Temple of Mystery, scrolling the top card of his library to the bottom. He then casts Paradise Druid and passes to Martin. I play a Plains and cast Open the Armory. I search my library for Shielded by Faith, putting the aura into my hand and pass the turn. Daniel plays a Swamp and casts Necropotence. He then pays two life, exile the top two cards of his library face down and moves to his end step. Here, Daniel puts the exiled cards into his hand and ends his turn. Alex plays a planes and casts Baby Godzilla Ruin Reborn. Aww, look how cute he is! Not yet finished, Alex casts Parcel Beast, drawing and discarding a card with Baby Godzilla's ability. With nothing more to do, Alex passes to Sam. Sam plays Woodland Cemetery, which enters untapped and mutates Migratory Greyton onto his Paradise Druid. The Great Horn's ability triggers and Sam searches library for an island. He puts it onto the battlefield tapped and passes the turn. I play a forest and cast my commander, Siona, Captain of the Pileus. I look at the top 7 cards of my library, put Rancor into my hand and end my turn. Daniel plays Terrain Generator and activates the land's ability to put a swamp into play tapped. 
Next, he pays two life to exile two cards from his library with Necropotence, passes to me, and puts the exiled cards into his hand. Alex begins his turn by activating his Portal Beast's ability, looking at the top card of his library. He puts the card into his hand, plays Windswept Heath, and then mutates Dreamtail Heron onto Baby Godzilla. Alex draws and discards with the Baby Godzilla's ability, draws with the Heron's ability, and passes the turn. Sam moves straight to combat, attacking Martin with Migratory Great Horn. Martin declares no blocks, and Sam responds by mutating in C Dasher Octopus underneath his attacking creature. The Great Horn's ability triggers, allowing Sam to put a swamp into play from his library, and damage then occurs. Martin takes three, and C Dasher Octopus' ability triggers, letting Sam draw a card. In his second main phase, Sam casts Elvish Mystic adding to his mana dog collection, and passes to Martin. I play Desert of the True, curse the fact that it enters tapped, and pass the turn. Daniel plays Shizo Death Storehouse, and once again puts a swamp to play tapped with Terrain Generator. Keeping with tradition, Daniel pays two life to exile two cards on top of his library, ends his turn, and puts the exiled cards into his hand. I respond to this by paying a life and sacrificing my fetchland to put Zagoth Triome into play tapped. Not yet finished, I flash in a C Dasher Octopus of my own, mutating it under my Heron. I draw and discard with Baby Godzilla, draw with the Heron, and move to my turn. Alex plays Bountiful Promenade and casts Bio Quartz Space Godzilla. That's not something I ever thought I'd have to say on this channel, but hey, here we are. Moving to combat, Alex attacks Daniel with his feathered tentacle dinosaur monstrosity, dealing him 3 damage. He then draws a card from his octopus's ability, and passes to Sam, who responds by casting Entomb. Sam searches his library for Golgari Grave Troll, puts it into his graveyard, and proceeds to his turn. Sam chooses to dredge 6 and return Golgari Grave Troll to his hand instead of drawing, and then casts Vivian, Champion of the Wilds. He activates her minus 2 ability, exiling one of the top 3 cards of his library face down, and then moves to combat. Here he attacks Martin with his Great Horn, dealing him 3 damage, and draws a card with his Octopus. Sam then passes the turn, and Martin responds by sacrificing his Mirrored Landscape to put 2 planes into play tapped. Martin then moves to his turn. I begin my turn by casting Shielded by Faith, to which Alex responds by countering the aura with Stubborn Denial and I was really looking forward to having an infinite amount of 1-1s. Not to be deterred, I play Secluded Step and cast Rancor. I enchant my commander, triggering her ability, and creating a 1-1 human soldier token. Moving to combat, I attack Vivian with Siona, and Sam responds by casting Abrupt Decay. I put my commander into the graveyard, Rancor back into my hand, and end my turn. Daniel plays Volroth's Stronghold, and then casts Jet Medallion. Not yet finished, he uses Terrain Generator to put Swamp into play tapped, and casts his commander, Kalatas, Traitor of Get. Next, Daniel pays 3 life to exile 3 cards from his library, and moves to his end step. He puts the exiled cards into his hand, and I respond by activating my Parcel Beast's ability. I look at the top card of my library, put it into my hand, and move to my turn. Alex plays Glacial Fortress and mutates Necropanther onto Baby Godzilla. He draws and discards with Baby Godzilla's ability, draws with Dreamtail Heron's ability, and returns the Cold Eye Selkie that he just discarded to play with Necropanther's ability. Talk about value plays! Moving to combat, Alex attacks Daniel with his Flying Baby Dinosaur, and Vivian with his Full Size Space Dinosaur. Daniel takes 3 damage, Vivian's loyalty is reduced to 0, and Alex draws a card of C Dasher Octopus. In his post combat main phase, Alex casts Migration Path, searching his library for 2 forests. He puts both lands into play tapped, and passes the turn. Sam starts his turn by mutating Auspicious Starrix onto the pile of cards that used to be a Paradise Druid, and puts a swamp onto the battlefield with Migratory Greathorn's ability. Next, he resolves the Starrix's ability, putting an island, Lanoir Elves, Stinkweed Imp, and a forest onto the battlefield. Not yet finished, Sam mutates his commander, or the Ever Playful, onto his heavily mutated creature. He searches life for an island, and puts it into play, 
Ann Putz, Command Tower, Hinterland Harbour, Mole Drifter, Phyrexian Delver, and Zagoth Triumph onto the battlefield with Auspicious Starrax's ability. That card is super powerful for an uncommon. Sam then resolves his newly acquired creature's abilities, drawing two cards with Mole Drifter, and puts Eternal Witness into play with Phyrexian Delver. He loses three life to the Delver and returns Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, to his hand with his Witness's ability. Still not finished, Sam cuts Vivian and activates her plus one ability. He targets the Otrimi stack with Vivian's ability, giving it Vigilance and Reach, and moves to combat. Here, he attacks me with the multi-carded monster, dealing me six damage, and both C Dasher Octopus and Otrimi's abilities trigger. Sam returns Dirge back to his hand with his commander's ability, draws a card with his octopus ability, and finally ends his turn. Whew. I start my turn by casting Rancor, enchanting my soldier token, and then cast Winds of Wrath. Alex responds by activating his Parcel Beast ability, putting the top card of his library into his hand, and the board wipe then resolves. All of the destroyed creatures are exiled thanks to Kalatas, and Daniel creates 13 2-2 zombie tokens with the Vampire's Over ability. Hmm, maybe wrestling the board wasn't such a good idea after all. Questioning my life choices, I pass to Daniel. Daniel plays Deserted Temple, and then casts Vidorkin Ori. Moving to combat, he attacks Vivian with three zombies, Sam with six zombies, and me with four zombies. Before damage occurs, Daniel flashes out exquisite blood, much to the dismay of the rest of the table. Vivian's loyalty then hits zero, Sam takes 12, I take eight, and Daniel gains 20. In his second main phase, Daniel pays five life to exile five cards of Necropotence, he then passes the turn, putting the exiled cards into his hand and flashing out Thermatic Compass. Daniel then discards down to seven, and I proceed to my turn. Alex plays Opal Palace and then casts his commander, Kenrith the Returned King. He uses Opal Palace to cast the Monarch, letting him enter with a plus one plus one counter, and then casts Glowstone Recluse. With nothing more to do, Alex ends his turn. Sam begins his turn by casting Fact or Fiction, revealing an island, sunken hollow, jungle hollow, drowned catacombs, and trumpeting gnar. Feeling sorry for the poor guy, I put all five cards in a single pile, allowing him to put them all into his hand. Thankful for the gesture, Sam casts Beast Whisperer, followed by Golgari Grave Troll. The troll enters with two plus one plus one counters, and Sam draws a card thanks to his Whispering Elf. He then discards down to seven, and passes to Martin. I start my turn by casting Sun Titan, returning Siona to the battlefield with his ETB. I fail to find an aura with her ability, making me rather sad, and then begin the laborious task of negotiating with Alex. I ask Alex to give my Titan haste with his battlements, and in exchange I promise to kill Daniel and Sam on my next turn. Lacking the sound of this, Alex grants my request, and I move to combat. Here I attack Daniel of both of my creatures, and return shielded by faith to the battlefield of Sun Titan's attack trigger. I enchant Siona with the aura, causing her ability to trigger, creating a 1-1 human soldier. This then triggers shielded by faith's ability, allowing me to move it over to the newly made soldier, which causes my commander to create another soldier. I repeat this process 6,969 times, making a silly number of tokens, and damage finally occurs. Daniel takes 9, and I pass the turn. Daniel plays a Swamp and pays 15 life to his Necropotence. He then ends his turn, putting the exiled cards into his hand, and flashes in Nikana Revenant. Making the most of his doubled mana, Daniel then casts Blood Tribute, tapping his Revenant to pay for its ticker cost. He targets Martin with the spell, draining him for 17 life, flashes in Lightning Greaves, and then flashes in Shadow Spear. With nothing more to do, Daniel discards down to 7 and ends his turn. Alex plays Steam Vents, paying 2 life to have it enter untapped. Next he mutates Snapdax Apex of the Hunt onto his Gemstone Recluse, triggering both of the creature's abilities. Alex puts 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on his creature, deals 4 damage to Sam's Beast Whisperer, and forgets to gain 4 life, given that his card is in Japanese and he can't read it. Silly Alex. Not yet finished, Alex mutates Mind Leecher onto his creature. He puts another 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the creature, 
deals 4 damage to Siona, and once again forgets to gain 4 life. Alex then exiles the top card of everyone else's libraries, opting not to look at them or cast them for the sake of practicality, and moves to combat. He attacks Daniel with his mutated Mind Leecher, dealing him 18 damage, and passes to Sam. Sam plays Sunken Hollow and casts a super creepy looking demonic tutor. That's an Annabelle looking stuff right there. He searches the library for Pernicious Deed, casts the enchantment, and sacrifices it where X is 6. Daniel responds by flashing in Sorin, Imperious Bloodlord, and then pays 5 life to exile 5 cards with Necropotence. The board is then wiped and Martin puts Rancor back to his hand. Next, Sam casts Commune with the Gods, revealing Glade Cover Scout, Titan's Nest, Temple of Malady, Waterlogged Grove, and Manor Weft Sliver. He puts the Scout into his hand, casts her, and passes the turn. I start my turn by casting Core Spirit Dancer, and then cast Rancor. I enchant the Dancer, drawing a card from her ability, and then cast Daybreak Coronet. I once again enchant my Core, draw another card, and play Tranquil Thicket. With nothing more to do, I end my turn. Daniel plays Dark Depths, which ends with 10 Ice Counters on it, and activates Sorin's minus 3 ability. He puts Thief of Blood into play, whose ETB removes the counters from Sorin and Dark Depths, causing the land to be sacrificed and putting a 2020 flying, indestructible Marit Lage token into play. Well, that's the thing that just happened. Thief of Blood then gains 11 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and Daniel casts Temporal Extortion. I decide to do the table a favour, paying 12 life to counter the spell, and Daniel then casts Mephidros Vampire. He then passes to me, putting the 5 cards exiled by Necropotence into his hand, and discarding down to 7. Alex recasts his commander, who enters with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters, thanks to Opal Palace. He then plays Sea of Clouds, and passes the turn. Sam plays Drowned Catacombs, and then casts Tamiyo, Collector of Tales. He activates her plus one ability, naming Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. He reels top four cards of the library to be Golgari Thug, Shriekmaw, Brockus, Apex of Forever, and Toxic Deluge. All four cards are put into the graveyard, and Sam mutates Brockus onto his elf from the graveyard with its ability. Happy with his plays? Sam ends his turn. I begin my turn by casting Archon of Sun's Grace, and then cast Snake Umbra, Enchanting Core Spirit Dancer. I draw a card of my Dancer's ability, make a 2-2 Flying Pegasus with my Archon's ability, and move to combat. Here I attack Sam with my Core, dealing him 12 damage and gaining 12 life from her lifelink. With nothing more to do, I pass to Daniel. Daniel plays Prismatic Vista, and casts Bloodline Necromancer. He returns Nakana Revenant to the battlefield with Necromancer's ETB, and then casts Sorin Markov. Daniel uses the Planeswalker's minus 3 ability to reduce Martin's life total up to 10, making him very sad, and then moves to combat. He attacks Sam with Marat Lage and Mephidros Vampire, and me with Thief of Blood. I respond by activating one of my King Chemist's many abilities, choosing to gain 5 life. Sam responds by mutating Dirge Bat onto Glade Cover Scout, using his mutate trigger to destroy the vampire coming at him. Sam then blocks the massive tentacles coming his way, and I take 12 damage. In his post-combat main phase, Daniel casts Wound Reflection. He then moves to his end step, and we double-check the rulings on Soren Marco's minus 3 ability. Sadly for Martin, the ability does indeed count as him losing life, and both mine and his life totals are reduced to zero. Now that is a sneaky play. Out of tricks, Daniel passes the turn. Sam starts his turn by casting Poliwog Symbiote, followed by Trumpeting Gnar. He replaces the draw from his Poliwog with a Dredge 6 ability, returning Golgari Grave Troll to his hand, and then discards a card. Next, Sam casts the Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath that he just milled for its escape cost, exiling 5 lands in the process. He gains 3 life, draws a card, and activates Tamiyo's minus 3 ability. Sam returns the Toxic Deluge in his graveyard to his hand, and casts Oko, Thief of Crowns. He uses the Planeswalker's plus 1 ability to turn the Mighty Marit Large into a lowly 3-3 Elk, justifying Wizard of the Coast's decision to ban him in almost every format, and casts Golgari Grave Troll. 
The troll enters with 10 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and Sam ends his turn. Daniel casts Twilight Prophet and then recasts his commander. Moving to combat, he attacks Sam with all of his creatures that are able to do so, and Sam blocks the creatures that don't have flying. He then takes 12 damage from the unblocked Thief of Blood, and Daniel moves to his end step, finishing Sam off with Wound Reflection's trigger. Well, that's it for another game. We hope that you enjoyed watching Daniel claim victory for himself for a third time, maintaining his undefeated status on our channel. Remember that you can support the channel in four quick and free ways. Liking this video, subscribing to our channel, clicking that bell icon, and leaving us a comment. I read every one. Also, feel free to check out our Patreon page for exclusive content, polls, tokens, and playmats. That's all for now though, we'll see you next time.